Today is a wonderful day that the Lord has made. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. It is my privilege to stand before you as a vessel and as a servant of God to be used of God to be a blessing unto your life. Hallelujah. I want us to discuss something I call dispossessing to possess. To dispossess to possess. Hallelujah. There are no free blessings. Tell your neighbor, there are no free blessings. It is always connected. Tell your neighbor, it is always connected to an instruction and an assignment. Hallelujah. We know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is for free. Hallelujah. That is why there is judgment. And that is why God will come at the sound of the archangel. And the Bible said, all eyes shall see him. And he will come in his glory to judge the world. And shall rapture the church unto himself because of the grace that has been freely given. Hallelujah. But the grace is given unto us that we should walk in it. And, and, and we should enjoy the fullness of the benefit of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. When God created man in Genesis chapter 1 verse 20 says, He said, let us create man in our own image, in our own likeness. To function like us and to look like us. And let them have dominion. Tell your neighbor dominion. Dominion. Tell him you are created to have dominion. Not over human beings. Tell him him or her not over human beings. But over the creation. And the creature of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We must understand that God gave man dominion. In the garden of Eden, man was given anything he will ever need. There was an availability in the garden of Eden. The Bible said God comes in the cool of the day to commune with man. And the Bible said, Adam said, I heard the voice of God walking in the garden in the cool of the day there was a relationship and an intuition and there was a visitation on daily basis so job understood and job said what is man that you visit him every day and the psalmist said that what is man that you are mindful of him so in the garden of eden god brought heaven onto earth but satan who came onto the planet before human being and humanity had our place and was created into this world knew that God had an assignment and an agenda for humanity and for the church of God and for believers to have total dominion and to enjoy heaven on this earth. So the enemy came through and deceived the woman according to the New Testament. The woman was deceived and Adam followed because of the love for his wife. And that brought the fall. And that disposition man from the actual and original position and the intent of Elohim. That created man in his own image to look like him and to function like him. So we are created to look like Yahweh and we are also created to function like him. So when we see man, we must see God. Hallelujah. When we encounter humanity, we must encounter divinity because God has created man in his own image. Man is the highest species. Animals can never be compared to man. There is no creature of God that has the, that level and that capacity that man has. Even the power of reason is a key. Hallelujah. No matter what you do, an animal is an animal. Amen and amen. amen. But to dispossess. Why? Because the enemy has taken hold due to ignorance, negligence, laziness, tiredness. Slumberness, the enemy has taken possession of what belongs to us. The Bible says, For we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that even though he was 
a rich man. He was he lived in wealth because of us. He became a poor man that we might through his poverty might be made rich. So Jesus came back to restore man. Amen and amen. But there is a song that we sing. He got the whole world in his hand. It is true. But Satan, Lucifer, also has power in this earth. And has dispossessed man from what God originally created man to do. Hallelujah. So we must come back and we must understand. The Bible said in Genesis 1.28, it said, Let them have dominion over the fishes of the sea, the fowl of the air and over every creeping thing that creeped upon the face of the earth let them subdue let them tame but when we check the life of the believer why the believer because the believer is the one that has been bought preciously by the blood of jesus when we check the life of believers it's like we are shorthanded. handed we are we have a short hand in the blessing we are living less we are not enjoying covenant blessings and covenant privileges. It is high time we come back onto ourselves to dispossess whatsoever the enemy has stolen from us. The Bible said in John chapter 10 verse 10 that the chief, the enemy, the Lucifer, the Diabolo, the demonic, he came not but to steal, to kill and to destroy. When there is something to steal, the enemy will come. When there is something to kill, the enemy will appear on the scene. When there is something to destroy utterly, the enemy will appear. But 1 John 3, 9 declares that for this purpose, tell your neighbor for this purpose, the son of man was manifested. Today may Jesus manifest in your life. I didn't hear your amen. I said may Jesus manifest on your life. May Jesus appear in your life. May the Holy Ghost appear in your life and let every calamity, every havoc, every pain, anything that steals away your joy, let it backfire in the name of Jesus. The enemy always has pains in possession. When you go to the underworld, the marines, the witches, the wizards, the obia, stargazers, necromancy, enchanters, manipulators, spellcasters, they have in possession of things that they don't use. The Bible said in Luke chapter 11, verse number 12, that the strong man armed, keep it his palace to enjoy peace. Hallelujah. He said the strong man armed. So the enemy is an armed strong man. But we have an anchor. But we have a Jesus. But we have a God who said I have power to lay down my life and I have power to take it. Who said whosoever believeth in me, though he is dead, he shall resurrect. Today I am here to challenge you and to exhort you that you must understand that where you are now, where you are going, there is a space, there is a gap, and there is a bridge. What God intends for your life, that is not what you are seeing. He said, I has not seen. So it means even if you feel, because God cannot be exhausted. And that is why you can't outgive God. Because he said that the cattle on the hill is mine. Silver and gold is mine. So what you enjoy and what you call a fulfillment and a manifestation and that you have come to your destination, I am here to tell you there is something caught up. There is something ahead. There is a greater height and there is a greater level. Today I want to challenge you that don't be satisfied. Don't settle for less. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God restored us back to where we belong. But it's like we, 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 we are still not enjoying. It's like we have come to a place 
that we cannot see the actual blessings. The Bible said, David said that, and we cried in Zion when we remembered. When we remembered what we used to enjoy, privileges, divine grace and things we don't ask for that are freely given to us. When we remembered, we wept. I don't know what you are going through. There are some people here who come to church, smile, laugh, dance, sing, shout, jump, and do all sort of things. And when they enter into their room, their pillows become the, 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 the wet because of weeping, lamenting, and wailing. But I am here to tell you, if you tighten your seatbelt and, 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 and you jump from where you are, and you move and switch from where the enemy has kept you, you will enjoy what God has determined to give to you. Amen. Let's open our Bibles to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 2. Deuteronomy chapter 2. I want to lay a certain background, so just follow me. I'll be reading quick. Then we turned and took our journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. And as the Lord spake unto me, and we compassed Mount Seir many days. And the Lord spake unto me, saying, Ye have compassed this mountain long enough, turn ye northward. And command out the people, saying, Ye are to pass through the coast of your brethren, the children of Esau, which dwell in Seir. And they shall be afraid of you and take good heed unto yourself thereof. Meddle not with them, for I will not give you their land. No, not so much as a foot breath, because I have given Mount Seir unto Esau for a possession. Ye shall buy meat of them for money that ye may eat, and ye shall also buy water of them for money that ye may drink. Let me fast track and prophesy over your life that anything you will need, anything you will ever need, you will not borrow to get. You will buy because the blessing of God is about to fall on your life. If you believe it, shout, I receive. He said you will buy. Many Christians enjoy free things. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And if we want certain blessings for free, yes. when you look to the account of Abraham, he did a lot of things and went into many types of covenant. So as David, David had about seven kinds of covenant with God to be called a friend of God, to be called a man after my own heart. Let's continue. For the Lord thy God has blessed thee in all the works of thy hand. He knoweth thy walking through this great wilderness, these 40 years. Take note of the 40 years. The Lord thy God has been with thee. Thou hast lacked nothing. Today I prophesy that may you lack nothing in the name of Jesus. I think some people didn't come to church. If you have experienced what we call lack, you will know what I'm talking about. I say I prophesy over your generation, over your life, over your business, over your family, over the church of God, over this house, over anyone at the sound of my voice and anyone watching, for, watching to this service that you will not lack anything except for the class that and the church lack nothing in the name of Jesus. Continue, please. And when we pass from our brethren, the children of Esau, which dwelt in Seir through the way of the plain of Elat, and from Ezion Gaba, we turned and passed by the way of the wilderness of Moab. 
And the Lord said unto me, Distress not the Moabites, neither contend with them in battle, for I have not given thee their land for a possession, because I have given her unto the children of Lot for a possession. The Emims dwelt therein. In time past, a people great and many and tall as the Anakims, which also were accounted giants. Tell your neighbor, giants. Yeah. Any giant, look, 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 look to your neighbor, look to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, today I prophesy, I decree, and I declare any giant, any giant, any disembodied spirit. Any agent of the enemy who has become a giant on your life, on your life today, let them be dispossessed, let them fall and perish in the name of Jesus. He said, As the Anakims, but the Moabite called them Emmons. He said, These people were great, they were tall. Unnumberable. We have the Anakims that we call the giants. And we have the Zuzamims, which are also giants. And we have Emims. All these people are classes of giants. But with a one stone, David threw against Goliath, who persecuted the children of Israel day and night and said, Give me someone to fight. To anybody who has become any giant over your destiny who persecute today and night the Lord will bombard your destiny and your life with divine authority with an idea with one blessing with one favor that will catapult you into the palace into the palace in the name of Jesus David never threw five stones. He picked, but he needed only one. You are in a challenge. You need an idea. One idea. Look, Mary just needed one favor. And his, her enemies became irrelevant. And Nazareth became irrelevant. May God bless you until your enemies become irrelevant. In the name of Jesus. Let's go, let's go. He said the Horibs also dwell in Seir before time. But the children of Esau succeeded them. When they have destroyed them from from before them and dwelt in their stead. Anybody sitting in your throne. Anybody sitting on your marriage, anybody that have taken your place, any man, any woman that has become a king and a queen over your destiny, that have taken your throne, today we dethrone them, today we dethrone them, and we enthrone our palace, we enthrone our children, we enthrone our generation, we enthrone our business, we enthrone our marriages, we enthrone our spirituality in the name of Jesus. Let's go. Now rise up and get you over the brook Zered. And we went over the brook Zered. And the space in which we came from Kadesh Barnea until we were come over the brook of Zered was 30 and 8 years. These people went through a 40 years of captivity, of pain, of sorrow, and entered into another 38 years. I don't know the years of your calamity and your pain. But there is a God that can turn things around. He said, a day is like a thousand days before me. There is a God that takes a man from the dungeon and from the merry clay and set his feet upon the rock. There is a God that moves mountains, that moves barrier. There is a God that goes behind the scenes and turns things around for your good. Let's look at what happened. He said, 
until all the generation of the men of war were wasted out from among the host as the Lord swore unto them. For indeed the land of the Lord was against them. The hand of the Lord was against them to destroy them from among the host until we were consumed. So it came to pass when all the men of war were consumed and dead from among the people that the Lord spake unto me saying, Thou art to pass over through uh, the coast of Moab this day. And when thou comest nigh unto the children of Amnon, distress them not, nor meddle with them, for I will not give thee of the land of the children of Ammon any possession, because I have given it unto the children of Lot for a possession. That also was accounted to the land. That, was, that also was accounted the land of Jan. Jan dwelt therein in the old times, and the Ammonites called the Zamzumims, a people great and many and tall as the Anakims, but the Lord destroyed them before them, and they succeeded them and dwelt in their stead. The, every giant has six fingers, six foot toes. Above six feet tall. Hallelujah. And these people stood against the children of Israel. Even Lot, whose children took advantage of his drunkenness and slept with him and produced Amnon. That generation even had a possession. Any demon, any authority that has capitalized on your weakness, on your mistake, on your sins, your negligence, and your ignorance that is fighting against you. May the arm of the Lord be against them in the name of Jesus. Even them, they had a possession. They had something to testify about. And the Bible is just accounting of it. And they also dwelt in someone's stead. The children of Israel enjoyed gold. They enjoyed favor. They enjoyed, the Bible said, and the Lord spoiled the children of Israel in the presence of the Egyptians. And he gave them favor. And they asked of them gold, silver. And they gave unto them the, the, the treasures that was in Egypt. That treasure that was full and that was, that was mounted up with, with the blood of their grandparents who were labored and who went through pain, suffering and hurt through the hand of the tax masters. Those big, big places, those big, big palaces that were created and those treasures, the Lord used a day. Tell your neighbor, you don't need so much. When God comes into your life, it takes a day. It can take a minute. It can take an hour. You will dispossess to possess what belongs to you. If you believe it, clap your hands unto God. Please go with me. He said, as they did to the children of Esau, we dwelled in Seir. When he destroyed the horns from before them and they succeeded them and dwelled in their stead. Even unto this day, let's go. And the Athens who dwell in Hasirim, even to Asa, the Captorims, which, which came forth out of Captor, destroyed them and dwelt in the Aster. Rise ye up. Please let the scripture stay on the screen. This is where I'm dwelling. Yes. Hallelujah. To dispossess, tell your neighbor, we need strategies. Yes. Because the enemy. Is cunning and wise, and it's a strategist. The Bible says we should be wise as serpents and be harmless as doves. It means we should have a dual character. We should live in divine duality, not the duality of living two lives, but we should live in wisdom to be wise and to be harmless but attacking dispossessing, possessing, taking what belongs unto us. The first strategy to dispossess, to possess is to rise up. Today many Christians are slammers. 
Many believers are sleeping. We even come to church and sleep. In the days of the apostles, the Bible said there was a man who came to church listening to the word of God in the upper room because in those days they built more story buildings. This man slept and fell down. Tell your neighbor, forgive. Forgive, forgive. He slept and did what? And fell. The Bible said, arise and shine. On, before you can shine, you must arise. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1. He said, for the glory of the Lord has been risen upon thee. Arise. Tell your neighbor, arise. arise. It is time to arise. It is time to take charge. It is time to arise from your slumberness. Isaiah chapter 52 verse 2. He said, shake yourself. Arise and shake yourself from the dust. We, we are too comfortable. That small room, that small blessing. That blessing that just triggered. Because of that, you come to church once a year. And you say, I came to commit my life unto God. To take me through the rest of the year. You, you, you are sleeping. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. For the children of Israel, God gave them instances. And God took them back to history. And gave them some remembrance about 40 years, about 38 years. About even Lot's descendants. About even Esau. And Jacob. They are descendants. They had a possession. And he's telling the children of Israel, before you can possess, you must dispossess because any blessing you want is here. Tell your neighbor, any blessing you want is in this earth. Hallelujah. I, I heard a research that was made that even if the most richest people on this earth distribute their monies and their wealth to humanity in this earth. Humanity can survive for 10 years. It means that anything, any money, tell your neighbor, any money you ever need is right here. God has already made possession. God has already made provision for you to possess. It is only for you to arise and to take charge. He said, rise up. In every warfare, you cannot sit fighting. You are a loser. If you sit down and you fight. No fighter sits down fighting. Hallelujah. The weakest believer is the one who sits fighting. There are generations that are kept tied down. As you sit here, you are a generation. You carry destiny in your womb and in your bosom. There are people that need you to go up. There are people that are praying that you should have a blessing. There are people that are dependent on you. There are families that are looking up onto you. When you fail yourself, you will fail the church, you fail the community, you fail the nation, Trinidad and Tobago. So you have, you, you tell your neighbor, you don't have time to sleep. People sleep and forget to pray. And even when the alarm is sounding, they, they turn it off. Some sleep angels appear into their room and tap them to pray. But they, they, st they still say, let me carry on. Let me continue. I've changed the gear. Tell your neighbor, you have been changing the gear for too long. It is time for you to arise. It is time. For you to arise. Jesus said unto that man who said, I have been here, people pass by me. Anytime the waters have been stirred, he said, Rise up. You must rise up in your mind, rise up in your spirit, arise in prayer, arise in seeking the face of God. People have time to watch series of movies. And even watch series. We have time. We don't even forget. But when it comes to prayer, we forget. When it comes to the things of God, we forget. When it comes to church, we forget. 
when it comes to spirituality we forget the devil will never let you pray I tell you anytime you want to pray and you see calls coming through text message coming through and, 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 and because the Bible said the Holy Spirit will remember us anytime I pray I enter into remembrance because the Holy Ghost will definitely remember you. And the devil will always take advantage as a counterfeit and also step in to remember you. Things you have to do, places you have to go, things you have to do, places you have to go. The time is running out. But at that time, God's angels are ready to take your prayer onto the heavens and bring you a miracle. But you forget about that. And you do anything but to pray, you won't. Tell your neighbor you must arise. To arise means to come on the scene, to be established, to become powerful, to become fulfilled, to erect and to set up and to be stationed. We are too comfortable. Rise up in your shame, your failure, your stigmatization and what pulls you back rise from it for when you rise your destiny will rise a latter day saint told me that i knew about what ninth prayers do and the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man does especially at night because life begins at night Whatsoever happens in the physical already takes place in the spiritual. The moment you can order, control, take dominion, take charge, you, 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 you can stand in the gap and do things the way you are supposed to do spiritually. Physically, things take course. Hallelujah. And this latter day saint gentleman told me that he doesn't understand something, but he has noticed that those who sleep at night, their stars are sleeping. Their stars are sleeping. You sleep from six to six. Ask your neighbor, are you a believer? You wake up and run for food. Hallelujah. He said, rise ye up. Please take me back. Rise ye. He didn't say, I shall rise up. He said, because he was talking to a people. Even if they were individual, they represent a nation. They represent a community. They represent a church. He said, rise ye up. Take your journey. You rise, but you sit down. The second strategy is to step out. Tell your neighbor, step out. Step out. You must rise to step out in order to make a move. Confrontation is a key to manifestation and exploit. What you don't move to change will move you. If you rise and you sit down and watch. The Bible said in the book of 1 Kings chapter 7 verse 3 that these four lepers said, why do we sit here until we die? If we go to the city, there is famine. If we return back, the people might fall on us and kill us. They let us go. Why? Tell your neighbor, why? 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 You must come to the point you ask yourself, why? Am I not tired? Hallelujah. He said, why do we sit here and do what? And die. He said, let us arise. Tell your neighbor, it is time that you should arise. It is time that you should arise. It is time for you to arise. It is time for you to make a move. It is time for you to step out. It is time for you to move forward. It is time. It is time. Tell your neighbor, tighten your seatbelt and move forward. 
In the second case, chapter 7, verse 3, sorry. He said, why do we sit here? There were four. The number four means creation. We are in the fourth month. If you relax and sit down, people will be creating things, creating ideas, making a lot of things happen and occur on this earth. And you'll be asking yourself why. Even though they ask why they made a move. And prosperity and plenty and abundance came with these four lepers. Tell your neighbor, it is time you step out. Please, let, let's go back. He said, take your journey. Take your journey. Take your journey and pass over the river Anon. Behold, I have given into thy hand Sihon, the Amorite. He said, rise and take your journey and pass over. The third strategy is to pass over false. Pass over false. The Bible said in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 16, that the righteous man falleth seven times, but he shall rise again. You have been fallen, fallen, fallen. You have refused to rise. People are still in their fall. Even you rise up, but your fall tells you that you can't make it. He said the right, because the number seven is the number of perfection. He said the righteous man will fall seven times to even a perfect state that does not de deserve mercy, grace, atonement and forgiveness. But he said he shall arise again. He said pass over. They needed to pass over. They needed to pass over a particular river. That was a boundary. Hallelujah. That was what? A boundary. But these people needed to make a move. He said, take your journey and pass over. The river Anon is, is a river that is, that is connected to other rivers. Hallelujah. That has a work to do in that place. It's a river that means war. So you have to understand that even you are facing war, even when you face you are fallen, even when you feel like giving up, even when you feel like throwing in the towel, even when you feel like the pressure is small, you must rise from that fall. Because the enemy will always want to keep you down. He needs candidate for hell. Hallelujah. He needs what? Candidate for what? Hell. The first strategy is to enforce your dominion. Tell your neighbor you must enforce it. You must enforce divine decree. Say today, in the name of Jesus, by divine authority, I enforce my rights. I enforce my blessing. I enforce my privilege. I enforce my success. I enforce my breakthrough. I shall not be disadvantaged. I shall not be disadvantaged. The enemy will not exact on me. The son of darkness shall not take over my destiny. I enforce it in the name of Jesus. These people needed to enforce dominion. Hallelujah. They needed to what? Enforce dominion. He said, rise, take your journey for I have given Anon and Shimon, the king of the Amorites, into your hand. And this Shimon is a stronghold. The name means stronghold. But the Lord said he has given him into their hands. But the people cannot possess until they go and dispossess this king. Even though it's a stronghold, that is why Luke chapter 11, verse number 12 declares that the strong man armed, keepeth his palace. And the rest of the verse says he enjoyed in peace. That is why the Bible is trying to say. But he said, if another stronger than him come and takes 
over, he occupies and take over the spoil. So even there is a strong man. He said, if another who is stronger than him, tell your neighbor, gather momentum. Gather strength. Gather momentum. And gather strength. Because God has made provisions. God has made availability for your next level, for your success in the name of Jesus. Sometimes in life, your, your destiny determines your battle. We are all not fighting the, the same battle. There are people here. We all came to church. But we all have different problems. Yeah. When you come to church and you see someone sleeping, texting, whatsapping, maybe the person has had a breakthrough. <laughs> Hallelujah. Maybe the person has just received some money and is enjoying it quietly. So don't come to church and look at characters and look at people and also shaping yourself in the same way. Because what is following you is different from what is following me. Your battle is different from my battle. The last thing is we must decide to possess. Please, let's be outstanding. Please, let's stand on our feet. We must decide to possess. The, the, the last scripture, Deuteronomy 2, 24. He said, contend unto them in battle until you possess. So you must make a decision. If you enforce divine decrees and you don't go to take what he said, I have given you Shinon. I have given you Anon. Even the Amorites, they were enemies of God. But he said, contend. You cannot say you don't, you don't like trouble. You are a peaceful man. The enemy is not a peacemaker. The enemy is a Confucianist. The enemy is a destroyer. The enemy is a thief. The enemy don't bring glory. The enemy bring disappointment and pain. Hallelujah. He said contend. Tell your neighbor, I am here today to contend, to possess. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. If I lift up my voice and I begin to pray and I clap my hands, any power, any entity that I've taken what belongs to me, as I lift up my voice and I pray, I dispossess, I dispossess, I strip them, I strip them of that grace, of that blessing, of that favor. I take back my child. I take back my destiny. I take back my marriage. I take back my spirituality. I take back my success. I take back my family, my prosperity. Lift your voice, clap your hands for the next one minute. <laughs> in the name of Jesus say I decree upon this house upon this church I decree upon this house upon this church that the enemy will not take an advantage of us today we enter into our possession we enter into our promised land in the name of Jesus.